Sometimes having a physical way to represent values can make math a little more tangible and meaningful and help you understand what the values are actually representing. So you were given a template of different shapes and the values that they represent. Each one of the larger values is represented by 10 of the values below it or 100 of the values below that. So I need 10 one tenths in order to make one whole. I need 10 one hundredths to make one tenth. So especially in terms of the tenths and hundredths, if you think of it as money, if you have 10 pennies, that's equivalent to one dime. So in trying to represent these, we can sometimes take a lot of something and simplify it by condensing it into a larger place value or if we have a larger place value and we need to be working with smaller units, we're breaking it up into its equivalent smaller value but with a lot more pieces. So the first activity had asked, all right, if you have this many squares, what is another way that you can express the same value of 13 hundredths? Well, I know that I have, if I have 13 boxes of 100, 10 of these can be simplified into one larger unit. So equivalent to 13 boxes is one large rectangle and three smaller squares. Equivalent value, just a simplified way of expressing that. Now here in question number two, it gave us a simplified version. I have two hundredths and five one thousandths, so I have 25 thousandths. And I need to be able to express this in another way. I don't have enough being units of two and five to be able to condense it into a larger unit and, and be working with the next size up. So what the only other way I can express this is take a unit and break it into its equivalent smaller values. So if I have a box that's worth 100, I need to break it into its smaller unit. And each one of the smaller units contains 10. So instead of having one box, I'm going to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then that simplifies that. I need to do it again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then I already had five. So I now have 25 lines and expressing that I have 25 thousandths. 3a asks us to take the, this value and express it in two different visual ways. So one is if I have one tenth, one tenth is expressed by one rectangle. And because this tenth cannot be combined with a bunch to make the one whole, I have to look to the smaller place value, which would be the hundredths. Ten Hundredths is equivalent to one-tenth, so I need to make ten boxes. Alright, so these two are equivalent expressions for this value. Now I have two hundredths, so I can express that as two boxes, each being worth a hundredth, or I have to go to the place value below it and make the equivalent 10 per uh, 10 lines per square. So you're going to end up making, um, and just for brevity's sake, I'm going to, you have 20 of these lines, okay? So just double this. So you got another set and another set. We'll just put zeros in there so you know what to fill in. Save your time. All right, the final way, uh, the final value we have to express here for question number three is four thousandths. So since it's in the thousandths position, I need four lines. One, two, three, actually, we'll make a stack. One, two, three, four. Then, again, I have to refer to the place value below that and make it an equivalent value. So if there are 10 units of these, for every one of these, I need this. 10, 10 of these, four times. So you're going to need to make 40 dots. 1, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And we'll just save you some time. You can make those dots on your own. Complete three more rows of that. 
The final question asks you to represent these addition problems using the diagrams of the base 10 units. So if I have three thousandths and five, or sorry, three hundredths and five hundredths, I need eight boxes. I need one, two, three, plus another five, one, two, three, four, five. So if I'm looking at this, I do not have 10, which would be enough to combine and then simplify to the larger place value. Because I haven't gotten to 10, this is as far as I can go. This is the physical representation of what 3 hundredths is. If we look at the 6 thousandth and the 7 thousandth, I'm able to use lines. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So I have 6 lines and then I can add in 7 more. Well, each set of 10 lines can be combined into one larger unit. So 13 hundredths, or th sorry, 13 thousandths could be expressed with one box for one hundredth and the one, two, three additional lines that carry over. So this would be the physical representation of 13 thousandths. The last one is four tenths and seven tenths, and each of those is a long rectangle. I have four, three, four, and then I have seven more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, okay? And I know that every time I have 10 of a unit, I can condense it and combine it to be a larger unit. Well, 10 tenths makes one whole. So I if I take one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and I condense those out, I can replace those log rectangles with one large box with one remaining rectangle. So I have one whole, one and one tenth as my diagram to represent that addition value.